Hello everyone. Yes. Two cats. Thunder is getting big. He's almost the size of Tomo now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I figured that was going to happen. Anyhow, just a quick little short intro to the next video. Work is about to overwhelm me, so I'm going to be gone for probably the next 10 to 15 days with videos, 10 to 14 days with videos. Just to let you guys know that I'm not going to be ill, nothing's going on. I'm just having to work 10 to 12 hours a day for the next 10 days. After that, I have a five-week vacation, so there'll be lots of happiness then. All right, just want to let you guys have a short intro so you don't wonder what happened to me. Back. Now on to the model video. I am here to talk about vinyl transfers. Here is my vinyl transfer for my base. Okay? What I've done is I've pulled off everything that didn't matter. Yeah, there's a few spots that look bad. That's because there's no backing and I see one spot that got misaligned. This is kind of a chore because these black letters don't want to stick to this backing. They're not meant to. So when you're peeling that backing off, if it didn't cut 100% correctly, it's going to come off a little bit. Now, the reason I got the camera out is I want to talk about this stuff. This is called transfer film. What I'm going to do is cut a piece of this, lay it over the top of that. That way the letters stick to this when I peel it off that backing. They maintain their alignment and I can lay it down on my base and get the vinyl stuck to the base. So what I'm going to do is get off camera, fix these, cut my piece of this to the size I need. And I'm going to layer down over that on camera so you guys can see it. And you can see how I'm going to put that on top of my base. Fun part is, I have an extra Babylon 5 Brickery Cruiser. The thing is sticking it on the back of my truck. No one's going to really know what that is, and it'll be fun. Okay? At least the Brock Curie Cruiser's going on the back of the truck, so everyone will be wondering what the heck that is. But that's neither here nor there. Back in a bit. Alright, here we go. I got the transfer film out. I got a piece of it cut. Well, not cut, but it's bigger than my overlay, and I'm just sitting her right down on my overlay and pressing her down in so that she is there. Okay, my transfer film's down. Those letters are locked in place where they are. All right, I'm cutting my transfer film now. All right, now I've got my base. I'm gonna peel this up from my work surface. That transfer film has taped it down to the work surface. Yay. There we go. Got my base, I have to get this aligned the way I want it. And here's the fun part. When you start, pu look, the letters are staying on the transfer film. They're supposed to, anyhow. Yeah. And they're not completely. So I'm gonna take a second. And we're gonna rub them in really well to get them to stick to the transfer film instead of their backing. Because I just noticed when I was trying to pull the transfer film up, they were not sticking to it like they should. Because I should have... See? Everything should be sticking to this transfer film. Like it is right here. I should not have anything remaining behind. And I'm not. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, I have a nice, clear setup, and I can put it on here the way I want it before I put it down on there. And I think I want it centered right about like that. That's looking pretty level. And when I set this down, these letters are going to stick now. And I'm rubbing it down in there to get those letters to stick because that vinyl will stick to that wood very well. Now I start peeling that up. Ooh, Nelly. It don't want to stick. Nope, that S wants to stick to the backing. There we 
go. And if they don't, you just rub them like I'm doing right now. There we go. Just take your time, don't be quick with it. You'll get them to stick down to the wood because once they're there, they're going to stay. So got a stubborn seat here. It wants, it thinks it should be sticking to the transfer film instead of the wood. You just slowly peel it up, and any place you see it's not, just rub it down in there. You got a Y that doesn't want to stick to the wood. Yeah, it don't want to. It thinks the transfer film's more fun. There we go. Got more letters that don't want to stick. If you're slow and careful, you'll get it. I'm going to quit filming and just show you guys the end result because this is going to be kind of slow. Because some of these letters would rather stick to the transfer film, and I don't want to bore you. All right, everyone, there's the resulting uh, letters transferred to my base. As you can see, they came out of line pretty good, and it looks really nice. I'm off to seal this up before anything happens to it. I'm going to hit it with some uh, polyurethane varnish. Seal up the wood and seal those letters down. And you know what? Once I'm done with that, throw a hole for the rod. The rod in it. The base is done for the Brock Erie Cruiser. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed watching that bit. You get yourself a vinyl cutter for $100. Make some really nice looking bases. Make signs for people's windows. Put stupid things on the back of your truck that no one's going to understand. It's all fun. All right. Talk to you guys later. Everyone, we're here to talk about the Brock Erie Cruiser. I've almost got the stand done. It's out in the garage curing up. It's got, I've uh, been three coats of uh, polyurethane on it. So it's as soon as it's cured up, it's pretty much done. I'm gonna put a couple coats on the bottom. I can't do that very quickly because I like to give it a whole day to dry between coats. So that's gonna take a teeny bit more time. But while I'm doing that, I can get this ready for the next step. So let's look down a little bit. What I'm working on now is a vertical stabilizers. Okay? That is these two bad boys right here. Alright? I'm going to pull the rod for the stand out. What I'm doing for the stand is this. This is a brass rod. It is not a tube. The brass rod is going to go in the wooden stand like this. Brass tube goes in the brachiri. We'll slide over it so she'll be free to spin and I can take her on and off. This tube has to be very long for a reason. Okay, let me put that back in the drilled hole has to be very long because this stabilizer goes down here like this and it's quite quite large my hands are in the way so let me get this out of here grab her from the top put it on the bottom so now you can see it's quite large a vertical stabilizer okay that's even on the backwards it goes like this there you go but it is quite large the one at the top not so large goes like this okay and I kinda have to have the stand done before I glue these on there too much because once they're glued on I know where I can sit it without stressing them so that's why I've been working on the stand so hard because again once it gets done I'll be able to set her on the stand in between working on her and I'll have some place to rest her now the reason we're making this little video here is when I did the wings and glued the pieces of the ship together I cut a whole bunch of brass pins and I still have some of, the, some of those brass pins left over but I was talking to someone over at Scale Model Attic and he suggested I buy some of these these are brads they already have points on them they already cut to length they have little knobs on the back to keep them from pulling out the fun part is they come in different sizes and they're cheap what I mean by cheap is this is like a buck a buck fifty 
So I think I, I bought five packages of different sizes just for this purpose. And I think I spent a whole $4 for all five packages. So now I got all the pins I ever need. These are steel, they're not brass, they're stronger. They're pre-cut. I got less fuss. All I have to do is drill holes and glue together. So I won't spend an hour or two sanding brass pins. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this big vertical stabilizer. I'm gonna make sure I got it orientated the right way before I do so, and I'm pretty sure that's the right way. It's supposed to be pretty much straight up and down on this end of the ship going towards the front. And that doesn't look straight up and down, that looks curved backwards. So this is the right orientation. I'm gonna get her lined up, I'm gonna make some reference marks, and then I'm gonna start drilling holes. Now for this bad boy, I'm gonna use one of these big ones, okay? That means I have to drill my hole in this perfect. If I don't drill this hole perfectly, up and down in this thing, with this long, as thin as this is, I'm gonna have a lot of seam filling to do, and I don't wanna do that, I've already done this. I may not use these, these are a little on the monstrous size. I may tone it down to these guys. This would be better. Yeah, one of those and a couple of these smaller ones will probably hold this in just fine. But that's the fun part of having all the different sizes, is I can figure it out as I go. One of these guys sure would hold it well. Sink it down in there about a quarter of an inch to a half inch with the knob on the end of it. The glue would help the knob from coming back out. And having this go in there for an inch or two, this ain't going to go nowhere when that's done. So I will see if I'm up to drilling that well. I have a drill press in the garage. So I should be able to drill that. It's just a matter of getting this mounted in perfectly up and down before I start drilling my hole. Now one of the ways you drill holes like that is you drill a small pilot hole and you slowly crank up the size of the drill bits to the size you need. So I will probably do that. I will probably go ahead and use one of those big ones because this guy's just huge. This guy, not so much. He can use some of the smaller ones and he'll stay on there just fine. So I'm gonna get marking and get my layout done so I can get those holes drilled tomorrow and I can get that vertical stabilizer on there. Because I don't know if some of you can tell, I'm going to have some pretty nasty seams to fill right after I get that on there. It won't be as bad as some of the wing seams were, or the seams on the inside of the ship. But it's still going to be a pretty bad seam. Alright, so I'll be back when I'm ready to start gluing her up and show you how well that came out.